every year, my high school would take a class trip to see the Nutcracker Ballet. And every year, I would sit in the audience and think to myself, why can't something exciting happen during this ballet? Well, in 1913, there was a very exciting ballet, the Rite of Spring. So today I'm going to be talking about the Rite of Spring uh, with the help of an article by uh, Ivan Hewitt uh, that was published by the British Library. Uh, but, uh, with the help of NPR, All Things Considered, uh, they did a 100th anniversary special of the Rite of Spring in 2013. And two newspaper articles uh, from uh, 1913 and 1914 uh, that talked about the Rite of Spring Ballet. So today we're going to talk about what is the Rite of Spring and what really happened. So it all took place uh, May 29th, 1913 in Paris, France. And uh, it was the opening of uh, uh, Igor uh, Stavitsky's uh, Rite of Spring Ballet. Now, Stavitsky had several hit ballets previous to this. So audience knew, audiences knew him uh, and thought they knew what to expect. Thought is the key word here. Now, it drew an eclectic crowd. It had uh, uh, rich people in the crowd uh, and also a very artsy people. A very artsy people in the crowd wanted to see this as well. So you had a, a very mixed crowd in the audience. And according to Ivan Hewitt, uh, in his article about the premiere of, uh, for the British Library, uh, the ballet broke every rule in the book uh, for a ballet, and music as well. Uh, the music was, was described as very harsh. Uh, it had a high range, so it was very high pitch. Uh, it was very loud. That was the other thing. It was, it was a very loud ballet. Uh, and the musical pace and musical uh, combo just didn't seem to make sense to ballet goers at the time and music uh, listeners at the time as well. So, uh, especially in 1913. So, uh, Hewitt also stated uh, that the dancing made people upset. Even the dancing in the in the ballet made people upset. Uh, he reported that Stavitsky's own in, in Stavitsky's own book, uh, Expositions and Developments, in 1959, uh, he described the dancers as quote, knock-kneed and long-braided lolitas jumping up and down. Now, uh, what that really meant was that these were not graceful ballerinas that we would think of as, as a traditional ballet. Uh, they were more or less jumping up and down, stomping on the floor. So they weren't, you know, these tutu-wearing ballerinas that, that were graceful. Uh, also, uh, in terms of dress, speaking of their tutus, they weren't exactly wearing that either. They were wearing animal skins. So apparently this uh, uh, got much of the wealthier clientele of the, uh, of the ballet uh, upset. Uh, and uh, oftentimes th it's reported that this caused a riot. Uh, but there's no real reports of a riot taking place. Uh, somebody may have called the police and called it a riot, and that's where this story came from. Uh, but it's, it wasn't a riot as we would think of. There wasn't any damage. Uh, people weren't uh, throwing things in the streets. They weren't uh, you know, lighting things on fire. Uh, instead, um, uh, what a London paper called it, uh, the, the, a London paper, The Observer, uh, said that the music would have uh, moved a saint to protest. Uh, and also, uh, it's widely reported that insults were thrown at the dancers. Uh, Hewitt wrote that uh, things like, call a doctor and call a dentist were shouted. And uh, there was a lot of insults mocking the dancers, mocking the music going on. However, uh, that was mostly the wealthy uh, go ballet goers. The artistic people, they saw some merit in this. Uh, they saw it as art. They saw it as something very, very, very different and something that they have never seen before. And they, that clientele seemed to like what they saw um, as early as 1914. So uh, a couple months later uh, in America, Mary Kellogg, a dance instructor, uh, called the ballet revolutionary. And that was reported by the Ogden Standard in uh, in Utah, but that was a wire report, so that was widely reported throughout uh, the United States. Mary Kellogg was uh, from Massachusetts. So, in conclusion, it didn't end in a real riot, like many believed. And 
certainly made for an exciting night uh, and an interesting piece of history. So today we learned uh, what is the Rite of Spring and what really happened that night. Uh, so uh, this was just really a, a very broad overview of what happened during the Rite of Spring. There's actually a three-week Harvard course online that you could take on the Rite of Spring, just talking about the impact of this, talking about what really happened, uh, what insults were thrown, what people really thought about this. So there's a lot more to this than a four-minute speech. So um, if you are uh, inclined to find out more, please take the Harvard course and have a great day. Thank you.